Both Deshaun Watson and Dak Prescott are at the center of some unanswered questions. But what if the answers to Texas's biggest pro football problems were these two star quarterbacks, but on the other side? Just hear me out. Let's turn back the clock to 2016, April of 2016 to be exact, where the Dallas Cowboys were looking to get a young quarterback to groom behind their veteran starter, Tony Romo. After failing to trade up into the first round to go get one, they took a chance on a dual threat record breaker from Mississippi State in the fourth round named Dak Prescott. Prescott started at the bottom of the preseason depth chart, but after injuries to both Kellen Moore and Tony Romo in the preseason, the day three drafted Prescott started week one in his first ever season. After leading his team to a 13-3 record, he never gave that starting job back. Fast forward to 2019 and Prescott was well established as an NFL starter and putting on quite the show. In what was a contract year, Prescott threw for 4,902 yards with 30 passing touchdowns, both top five numbers. He also added 277 rushing yards and three rushing touchdowns. But Prescott and the Cowboys failed to come to an agreement on a long-term deal following the season. And rather than lose their quarterback gem, the Cowboys decided to use their franchise tag on Prescott hoping that they could come to a better long-term agreement in the future. So Prescott entered the 2020 season on the tag and started his campaign on a record-breaking pace. Through the first four games of the season, Prescott threw for over 1,500 passing yards with a career-high pace in completion percentage. But then, for as bright as the fire of Prescott's 2020 season burned, it flamed out just as fast in the form of a devastating broken ankle injury. With nothing guaranteed beyond 2020, Prescott's future as Dallas' star was now in question. Roughly 240 miles south in the city of Houston, the Texans were dealing with their own uncertainty. Four days after the Cowboys placed their franchise tag on Prescott, securing one of their best players, the Texans were trading away one of theirs. Houston head coach Bill O'Brien, who was acting as general manager, traded away DeAndre Hopkins and a 2020 fourth round pick for just a 2020 second round pick, a 2021 fourth round pick, and running back David Johnson. That set a wave of criticism that only grew as the months went on, ultimately leading to O'Brien being fired just five games into the 2020 season. Before he was fired though, Bill O'Brien did something right by locking up the team's franchise quarterback Deshaun Watson to a four-year, $156 million deal. The then 24-year-old superstar signed the second biggest contract in NFL history behind only Patrick Mahomes, and the contract was well-deserved. Watson was coming off back-to-back stellar seasons in which the Texans were winners of the AFC South. But the loss of Hopkins and the failure to win a single game through the first four games of the 2020 season was too much for the Texans to put up with Bill O'Brien. So he was relieved of his duties, both as head coach and general manager. Fast forward to the end of the season, even though a coach was fired, Watson recorded a career year. He passed for a career high in yards and touchdowns with a career low in interceptions at the same time. And yet, the Texans finished with just a 4-12 and record because of how poor the situation was around him. With two big seats to fill, the Texans told Watson they wanted his input on who he'd like to see as head coach and general manager. They also hired a search firm for both openings. But when it was announced that they were signing Nick Casario as their general manager, it was also reported that not only did they not listen to the suggestions of their search firm, but they didn't listen to their quarterback either. That went for their interview schedule for head coach, too. Watson was fed up. He could take his top wide receiver being traded. He could stomach a 4-12 career year. He could even get over not having the number three overall pick because it was already traded away. But to ask for his help in the searches only to be ignored, that's what caused the tweets to flood and for reports to surface that Watson may have played his last game as a Texan just four months after signing the second biggest deal in league history. So here we are, two of the top quarterbacks in the game in situations they might not be with the teams they're on for much longer. But in both situations, each team won't want to lose their guy without some sort of plan. But what if the plan was each other? The Cowboys would love to sign Prescott to a long-term deal, but due to economic results of the COVID-affected season, the NFL's salary cap could be dropping. This could very well put the Cowboys in a similar situation where they can't even sign Prescott, even if they wanted to, given how much money he could command as one of the league's best. 
On the flip side, Watson wants out, and one would think the potential trade destination for him might be small due to his massive contract, but this mega deal is more friendly than it sounds. Though Watson's deal has an average payout of $39 million per year, if he's traded, due to his signing bonus being prorated, Watson's cap on his new deal would only be $10.5 million to his new team in the 2021 season before jumping to $35 and then $37 million in the years that follow. That opens the door to one of the biggest QB swaps in NFL history. Here's how it comes together. Let's say there was a dinner that may or may not have happened between Deshaun Watson and Cowboys owner Jerry Jones. Jones laid it all out on the table for Watson that they might not have the cap space for Prescott's number this year due to the lowered league cap. But when things go back to normal, the cap could leap the following year. They'd woo Watson with offensive weapons like Amari Cooper, CeeDee Lamb, Michael Gallup, Ezekiel Elliott behind still a very good offensive line. Jones could promise Watson a much better situation in Dallas than anywhere else for his prime years. And that could be enough for Watson to waive his no trade clause in favor of Dallas. On the other side, as the Texans weighed their options for a potential Watson trade, there could be a team who could give them a lot of draft capital, like the Jets or the Dolphins, but none would guarantee them a good quarterback immediately in return. Instead, the Cowboys proposed that they would sign Prescott to their franchise tag once again, then trade him and the Cowboys' next two second-round picks in return for Deshaun Watson. Knowing that Watson would have already waived the no-trade clause to move to Dallas, they know they'd be over that roadblock already. With this being the best way for the Texans to make sure they get a good quarterback and draft capital, they do the deal. After the deal, the Texans reach a long-term contract with Prescott for four years averaging $40 million per year. The Texans then draft Rondale Moore and Brevin Jordan in 2021, and then Chris Olave in 2022 to surround Prescott with the appropriate passing weapons. In Dallas, Deshaun wins league MVP in his first season with the Cowboys while finishing first in the division. They then trade Ezekiel Elliott to free up some cap space for Watson as his number increases on the big hits of his deal, but continue to be one of the best offenses in the league without him. Meanwhile, Elliott joins the Miami Dolphins for a price of a fourth and a sixth round pick. This allows the Dallas Cowboys to continue to stay competitive with Watson as their centerpiece. In the end, Prescott and Watson bring pro football back to glory in the great state of Texas and take their careers to new heights in one of the most monumental quarterback swaps in league history. And that's why I told you at the top to just hear me out. <laughs>